And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me And take me down Number one. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to United Church of Phelps. We're going to do things a little differently with joys and concerns because they uh, people figured, well, maybe it would make sense for the person that actually wrote them down could say them so that they know what is going on. So joys today are that it's good to see hope at church today. It's also a very bright, sunshiny fall day. Um, the bazaar is done, and I'll let <laughs> Linda <laughs> and I'll let Linda speak more on that. Do you have something more about that? All right, go ahead. Yeah, sure. to share with us with you guys so first I want to tell you that the bazaar was truly a COVID success story this year so far we received $1,877 from the sale of craft and food the dollhouse raised $230 for a fund at Midlake schools and Peg Carlson is finalizing the name of the fund um, and its purpose is to provide uh, the nurses with funds to furnish children with appropriate clothing, especially in winter. So that is absolutely an astounding amount of money for the few people that really attended. So um, it really is a tribute to the hard work and talents of the people that contributed. Um, so. we have available some things for sale still um, we have nine 16 ounce containers of corn chowder made by Doug Latch um, for a suggested donation not more than three dollars and we'll have those out by the kitchen um, all the baked goods and crafts are still displayed for purchase at the price that's marked on them so please stop over there check out there's lots of wonderful baked goods available um, if you made something and you um, would like to have it back because you donate it for other causes, um, if you want to pick it up following the shopping spree after church, we have them packaged up pretty much, you know, ready for you to go. And thank you for that. Um, another question was the lawn signs. Um, if you want to bring them back and leave them by the doors, I really want to thank you for uh, displaying them on your at your homes or your relatives' homes and for taking care of them. We did a survey, and signs were one of the main ways that people found out about the bazaar. So, so all of us were successful with that. So. I also want to just say a really special heartfelt thank you to all of the bakers, 
Crafters, creators, chefs, servers, helpers, bag ladies, cashiers, <laughs> COVID questioners, ticket providers, poster distributors, and sign displayers, and of course the shoppers for making this all work out to the glory of our, of our God. We are truly blessed at United Church of Phelps and in our surrounding community. And God is good. All the time. Amen. The other news I have to share of two other items. First, um, you'll notice these beautiful flowers. I happen to be here when Sandy of Sandy's Floral Gallery in Clifton Springs um, dropped them off. And apparently she donates and delivers to the church two arrangements every month to beautify our sanctuary. So, I, you know, I've often wondered, where'd they come from, you know? So, so Sandy's does that, and they'll usually be here the first Sunday of the month. So, just so um, you have an idea on that. Finally, today is really an important day. Um, it's actually Ellen's birthday, and she tries to keep things very low key, of course. So in order to comply with COVID, and yet we wanna joyfully make a noise, what we're gonna do is hum happy birthday, and when we get to the point of happy birthday, dear Ellen, when we get to Ellen, we're gonna say it. So join me. Oh, is there other birthdays? Okay, it's all Ellen. Ready? Come with me. I totally lost my mic. Anyway, um, you are the most loving congregation, and thank you so very much. I was trying to get under the radar. <laughs> All right, a few more joys and concerns, and, and then you can do announcements. Um, um, another joy slash concern is that Dan Morocco had surgery, but he is at home and he's doing well. So, fish surgery. The second half of his fistula surgery. All right, and a concern is Dawn Pierce's stepmom, uh, Betty, broke her hip and is giving the nurses a hard time. So <laughs> prayers that she will, she will um, let the nurses do what they need to do, and hopefully she's having surgery today or tomorrow. You said they haven't decided, they haven't decided yet. So. Um, a prayer for Kathy, who is positive with COVID. Um, prayers for Frank and Linda's nephew and um, the nephew's wife, who are recovering from COVID. In Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Um, ben Boschman had to have his shoulder replacement after falling and breaking his shoulder in four places, I believe. So prayers for him. Um, prayers for Dave Smolinski, Diane Rockefeller. Um, prayers that because COVID is increasing, please be sure to keep yourself safe. Um, prayers for Brian Gonzalez, who had knee surgery and hoping the results come back as not cancerous or he won't have to um, lose his leg. And he'll have, be having another surgery after Thanksgiving, I believe the email said. Um, Good wishes and healing for some of the animals that are in the congregation. Missy brought up that some of our congregations, animals, people have animals that are either sick or in need of some love and prayers. So keep in um, the animals of our congregation in your prayers as well. And I think that is all. We can go to announcements. Thanks, Christina. It is good to be in the Lord's house on a bright, sunshiny day. These are calendar announcements. Besides Ellen having a birthday this today, Erica Mosser has a birthday tomorrow. And we need to remember her. She brings a whole flock of kids when she comes. Kids Connection will resume next week at 
Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. Eddie, I'm getting a lot of feedback here. And turn it down just a little bit. Shoe boxes are due back on the 15th, which is next Sunday. Kazawasco is having a homemade pie sale the Sunday before Thanksgiving, that being the 21st. Pies are $10 each and must be pre-ordered. They are offering apple, Oreo cream, pumpkin, and blueberry. You can get your pies cooked or ready to bake. The contact information is up on our church website and on Facebook, or you can call the office. Kay is still looking for those of you that would like to share your musical talent with all of us during worship. So if interested, please see Kay after the service. All is welcome and appreciated. Scouts are doing scouting for food at the top store on 96 until today at 2. And the youth group will meet tonight at 5.30 at the Junius Church. Thank you for sitting patiently through all our announcements. Now let's listen to the centering music. To worship. There is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things, you alone are God. In our first song this morning, our unsung song, This Is My Father's World.
you join me in the confession? Loving God, Loving God we, we confess, confess before, before you and each, each other that our lives are not pure and holy, and holy apart, apart from, from the cleansing we have, we have from, the, from work the work of Christ. Christ. And, and we, we confess, confess that too often Christ, Christ in us is hidden by our actions that wound rather, rather than heal, that tear down, down rather, rather than build, build up. up. Open, Open our, our eyes so that we that may, we may see, see you in the, in the ones we say we love. We love. Open, Open our, our eyes so that we that may be make quicker, quicker to listen, listen than to speak. speak. Open, Open our, our mouths to, to speak good, good rather, rather than, than evil of our, of all our neighbors. Open, Open our, our hands in generosity and, and help us let go of clenched fists. Open our hearts to a desire to follow Jesus in full obedience to your will and your way. We pray trusting in your forgiveness and in the power of your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in paths of justice and righteousness for your name's sake. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Friends, believe the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. What's happening to our kids? Oh, they're going back farther and farther to the back. Okay, so what am I going to talk to you about today? That's a good question because I forgot about children's chat time. That's not good. And I didn't give Eddie a song to pull up or anything today. So, um, but I can't, s can you pull up really quick, Jesus Loves Me on the songs? Yes. Thank you, Barb. And so what I'm going to be talking about in, in the sermon is not something I want to talk about with the kids about. So um, I'll just keep talking until Eddie comes up with something that surprises me. Um, it has been a busy week for me this week. How about for all of you? Busy week, a messy week, um, election day, and a lot of stress around election day, and a lot of stress after election day, and COVID-19, and on and on and on we go, and the bazaar, praise God for the bazaar, and he's coming with something. See, I can always count on, on them up there in the... I could count on Kay. I could have said to her play, but I can't sing, so I can't have words. Well, I was going to do Jesus Loves Me, but he's got it on thing because we can't sing. Okay. Yeah, so. We could sign if we knew how to do that. Ah, Kay knows how to do that. Are we doing Jesus Loves Me? Sure. Sure, we're doing Jesus. You want to come sign it? I can't sign because that's a new way. I mean, that's the way I sing without words. I remember it. We'll believe it. We'll believe it. Okay. This is the sign for other. It's okay. You're up here and it's okay. okay. This is a sign for Bible. It's this is Jesus book. So it's this is Bible. Okay? I think okay. that's the only one I I'll, I'll tell you'll see the rest of them as we go. We'll just try to follow the leader. Uh, are we singing with music? We're singing with sign language with me. It's supposed to be coming. I think it's on its way.
to see those of you out there also doing trying to do what she was doing I can get as far as this <laughs> okay where am I at now let us pray gracious Lord we ask that you be with us this morning as I speak your word or attempt to speak your word for all of us to hear May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, I have a topic that people ask about in the world, as well as in the church. Um, it is, who created evil and who created Satan? Where did they come from? Ooh, big topic. Going to try to keep it can manageable so we'll see Isaiah 14 12 to 14 is our first scripture passage did I not put it on this on the um, this is all about Satan it's out of context but it's all about Satan so see what you can find out about Satan from this passage how you are fallen from heaven O shining star son of the morning you have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Do you hear things about Satan in that? Okay, Satan's choice, right, to become evil. Satan chose to be like God or better than God. 1 John 3, anyone who continues to live in Jesus will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. 
If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life, but a person who has no love is still dead. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. So, good versus evil. I want to first find out what you know about Satan. What do you know about Satan, other than Halloween stuff? Well, maybe you can get some stuff from Halloween stuff. He's a fallen, fallen angel. angel. He's alive and well in the world today. Alive and well in the world today. A deceiver. A deceiver. A liar. A liar. He's oh. called the accuser. He is called the accuser, that's right. Anything else? Okay, I want to go back to a different passage that tells, and now I'm going to have to figure out where I started. I had this problem at Genius 2. You'd think I would have marked it then when I did it. Uh, Ezekiel 28 talks about the beginnings of Satan, and I don't know why I didn't choose it for up here, but I didn't. He does try to be better than God. Okay. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you think you are as wise as a god, I will now bring against you a foreign army, the terror of the nations. They will draw their swords against your marvelous wisdom and defile your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit, and you will die in the heart of the sea, pierced with many wounds. Will you then boast, I am a god, to those who kill you? To them you will be no god, but merely a man. You will die like an outcast at the hands of foreigners. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Then this further message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, sing this funeral song for the king of Tyre. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. Red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green beryl, ox, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stores stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sin. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, O mighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings and it goes on and on but the part I wanted to focus on is the beginning part of this you were where where was Satan originally in the garden of and when God created the world and God created the garden of Eden and he looked around he said it was good and not just good but very good he was in that garden. He was clothed with every precious stone. Does that sound like an evil person? Somebody God doesn't love or care about? No. He was given all of that beauty. Um, he was ordained and anointed to be an angelic guardian. Amazing how, how he could have fallen so quickly and so drastically. So, okay, so God created Satan. Satan is a fallen angel. What do you know about angels? Created by God. God's messengers. A third of them fell from heaven along with Satan because they were Satan's followers. Okay. Angels are created. 
Our society is wrong. When you hear people say that their loved one died and went to heaven and, and they're now your guardian angel, no. People do not become angels. People are people. We will get a new body when we go to heaven and we will have a mansion where we can live because Jesus said there were many rooms in, in this house for all of us. We will have special um, duties or things to do for God, including the most important of worshiping God day and night because there's not going to be any night, right? It's only going to be daytime. Satan and angels were created. Satan was created to be an angel, obviously an angel of importance because he was given all of those fine gems to adorn him. He was lifted high and lifted up. He was powerful. He had special things he was supposed to do. And by golly, he decided he was better than the one that created him. Does that sound like any people in the world? Any people in the world feel like they're better? Or you know of people who think they're better than God? Better than the one that created them? They know better for themselves. They know better for you. They'll be happy to tell you how to fix your lives, right? Just ask them. They'll tell you. Um, so he was an angel in heaven. He was taken to the, to the Garden of Eden for a particular task there and that's where he met his demise because eventually when he decided he was so much greater than God and we don't know how much longer that was we're not told in scripture he takes the form of a serpent a snake whatever you want to think about and deceives the man and the woman into eating from the one tree they were not supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and once they partake of that even says you won't die which was sort of true right he they didn't die they didn't die a physical death they certainly died a spiritual death um, he convinced them to do that and those walks, intimate walks with God that I would so love to have in a beautiful garden on a nice summer day were no more for Adam and Eve. They went bye-bye because they had disobeyed God. But if God had made them puppets so that they would only do good things that God wanted them to do, where would their choice of choosing to honor God be? There wouldn't be. And God always gives us the choice to make decisions, to believe in God, to not believe in God, to honor God with our lives, to not honor God with our lives. So, when Satan was thrown out of heaven, where was he given to rule? Earth. And he does rule in earth. We've seen it this week, have we not? We've seen it over the last six months, I believe. We, but this week, the elections, what a big tumultuous thing that has become in our country. It doesn't matter whether you're red or blue. I don't even know which is red and which is blue. That's how ignorant I am. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It's everybody's after everybody. It's been very tumultuous, very stressful for me as a pastor. Um, and even in church, if, if somebody hears you say something and they interpret it a certain way, whew, there are words. And that's certainly not from God. Certainly not from God. COVID-19, you could in essence say that co perhaps COVID-19 was a part of uh, Satan's plan to get us upset and nervous and, oh, I don't want to get it, I'm afraid, I've got to stay at home, I don't want to stay at home, I want to be out with people, right? That stirred the pot some more. Um, and not only that, but even society today, I, I use this, you don't know who Anthony is, so I'm going to use Christina. I used Anthony as this example this morning at Genius, but I will use Christina because it's just as believable of her. So Christina called me up the other day and she said, Alan, hey, you want to go bar hopping? I said, hmm, well, that's not what I normally would do, Christina. I don't think that's normally what you would do, but sure, you know some places we can go to bar hop. So we meet at the bar, one, the first bar, and we are there, we're having a great time, and I am not against having a drink. So don't hear me say that in this example. But anyway, I'm sitting there having my Coors Light or my glass of wine or whatever I'm doing and enjoying life with Christina. We're having a good time listening to the band, whatever, and somebody comes up to both of us, two guys come up to both of us. 
not her significant other, nobody I know. Hey, come on, let's sneak out to the car. We can have a quickie out there. Well, what do you think, Christina? I don't know. Hmm. I've been married once. This is not like I'm a virgin. Everybody else is doing it, right? Hmm. And then we come back in, I'm going to let you decide whether I did that or not. <laughs> and then we come back in, and um, back, we're back at our, tables, uh, our table, and somebody comes up to us and said, Hey, you want to feel really good? Here, I got, try this, just try this. I don't usually take drugs. Well, it doesn't matter, it'll make you feel really good. Really good, just try it. Christina, try it. Ellen, try it. Everybody else is doing it. Okay. You can figure out where that leads, Christina and I, down a really bad path. Once you try drugs, you're hooked. Isn't that the way of the world? And is that God? God wants only the best for us. And none of those things I used as examples necessarily are the best for us. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to a bar. I'm not going to say there's anything wrong. Some of you don't do alcohol, and that's perfectly okay. I don't do alcohol anymore either. But I used to, and believe it or not, seminary, go out with friends to dance. I would buy one drink. It would sit on the table, because you had to buy something, right? It would sit on the table, and I would dance with my friend Ken, who taught me how to dance, and I loved dancing, and we would spend the whole night dancing. So I get the bar scene to some degree, and I get you can have fun. The problem is when we start thinking that, well, everybody else is doing it, so it's okay for me to do it, that's where Satan op has opened, you've opened a door for Satan to come into your life and say, it's not a big deal. What did he say to you, Adam and Eve? It's not a big deal. Surely God didn't mean you would die. But once you open that door and you say, it's okay, I can do it because everybody else is doing it. It's not a big deal. Evil has a chance to come invade you. And it's in subtle ways so that you don't even pay attention. Another innocent thing, okay? You're at the grocery store. I was at a grocery, I'll confess. I was working at a grocery store when I was a senior in high school. And little Miss Perfect Ellen, who never did anything wrong, was told by her classmate, who also, <clears throat> excuse me, worked at the grocery store, that it was okay to take candy bars for my snack without paying for them because I didn't get paid very much. And stupid Ellen, this is an example of how you can get started on a slippery slope if you don't catch yourself. Stupid Ellen bought into that, <clears throat> which wasn't good for this. Not that I was this big then, but... Um, and I would take candy, and it, yes, it would bother me. It wasn't right, right? You're supposed to pay for things. You don't take without somebody who owns it giving you permission. Um, but I did. And that could have led to a slippery slope for me if I'd allowed it to. But once I got out of there, I was thinking about it. That wasn't right. That was not right. It's the same thing happens when we work in places and we say, this is for the church, but I'm not going to pay for running off paper. And stuff. I'm not putting anybody down if you do this for the church. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going to run off all these copies on the work um, copier and I'm not going to pay for it, but the church won't have to. It's for God's work. It's the same kind of reasoning. It's a slippery slope that you can go down and you find yourself in a bad, bad place. Slippery slope. You think it's for good, but when you don't follow and you don't please God with what your choices are, it sends you places you don't want to be. Now, people will also say, oh, Satan doesn't, there's no such thing as Satan. So, I'm going to be bold today, and I'm going to tell you a story about my brother. 
I could tell you my own stories. Linda's heard some of the stories. I think I've shared some of the stories that I've had experiencing with Satan. And it's always when I'm doing something really great for God that I get visited because and to, de, ugh, to get discouraged, to try to walk away. My brother was at a Lutheran college, and he wanted to get as far away from my parents as he could, so he went somewhere the other side of Ohio. I can't remember where. Lutheran college. He had a roommate. It was a Christian school. That's why he chose it. He's a strong Christian. Um, he had a roommate who was a Satan worshiper. And he told me stories of things. I will just tell you the light stuff because we have some kids in the, in the room. But things like he would be in bed and his Bible would just go flying across the room. Um, strange things like that would happen. And it bothered him. And he wanted to come home. And my parents wouldn't let him come home. So whenever he called up Set. Guess who had to, had the job of of talking him down off the ledge and saying you can do this just for a few more months and then you can come home and go to school someplace else. That is just one example of many that I could give you that Satan is alive and well. Um, most people don't have those experiences. I think it's only people who have um, extremely strong faith that can stand up to Satan and say, no, I'm, I'm a child of God. I believe in God. I belong to God, so get away from me and go away. But I just want you to be aware that the answer is, if anyone asks you, the answer is yes. Satan is alive and well. Evil is alive and well. Look around the world and you can see evil things that that have not come from God, that have come from choices that created beings make, that Satan made, I'm better than God, I'm going to be better than God, that we make, oh, I know best for myself, I don't need to ask God about what I should do, I know, I know, what's best for me, it's okay. This week, pay attention. Give God praise and glory in all things. That, that is the exact opposite of what evil or Satan wants you to do. So no matter what happens this week, say, Thank you, God, because you're with me and I know you love me. No matter who you bump into, you, if there are people that rub you, none of you have people that rub you the wrong way, right? Um, you say, Thank you, God. Let my mouth reflect your love for them, even though I don't want to be around them. Thank you, God, because when we love, that is not Satan. Hatred is from Satan. Love is from God. And we have two commands from Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's all about love. That's what God is. That's what we need to focus on. Is this choice I'm about to make something that would be from God because he wants my best. So when we go bar hopping, Christina, tomorrow night or tonight, um, is that from God or is that not from God? Is that going to give God honor and glory or is it not? Think about it. Amen. Pray hard. Pray hard that Satan said the war's already been won. Jesus died and rose from the, cross, rose from the dead. That's the, that's the war. But pray hard for a revival for our land. We need God so badly in our world today. Think about it. Amen. Let us give thanks for the offerings that we have given to God today. Please join me in our, our offering prayer. Gracious God, we give you our best to you. As a covenant people, we seek to witness to your will and way. Help us know more clearly what you would have us do with the wealth you have entrusted to our care. As we contribute to the needs of your people, we present ourselves as living sacrifices. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us, oh, do we have, we have special music today.
Thank you, Frank. Let us pray. Why, Lord, must evil seem to get its way? Those who do not follow you seem openly scornful, mocking your name and laughing at us as we strive to follow you. We know your love holds true, and nothing can cause us endless sorrow and despair. Transform us into your people and show us your glory, which is often hidden from our sight by evil. We ask that you be with those who are dealing with any form of imprisonment. Heal those who need your healing touch. Repair the brokenness that comes from broken relationships. Grant comfort to those who are grieving loss of any kind. Hear our prayers. Listen now as we join together in the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final song is now Thank We All Our God. And you can stand or you can sit, whatever you're more comfortable doing. Um, it's verses 1 and 3 today. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen and amen.